The sound of Russian aggression as Ukrainians sleep in their beds. This residential part of Kharkiv, the latest target in the Kremlin's increased aerial bombardment of civilian areas. Firefighter Vladimir discovers that his father, also trying to rescue people, was one of the four killed. Arriving at NATO headquarters to mark 75 years since the creation of the military alliance forged to defend against just this kind of attack, Ukraine's foreign minister pleads for more help. I felt compelled to deliver a very sobering message on behalf of Ukrainians about the state of uh, Russian air attacks on my country, destroying our energy system, our economy, killing civilians. And I urged allies today to provide Ukraine with uh, new additional air defense systems. Meanwhile, a Russian-installed official in Ukraine's Donetsk region has said six civilians were killed on Thursday in Ukrainian attacks in parts of the country which are controlled by Russia. The US has promised more military aid for Ukraine, but its delivery has been blocked by warring Republican lawmakers in the House. Today, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged Congress to act while assuring that Ukraine would join NATO, just not yet. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership. The priority for now, he said, was getting fresh military aid for Ukraine approved on Capitol Hill. It's imperative that Congress move forward with the supplemental budget request that President Biden made for additional assistance uh, to Ukraine. It's not only in Ukraine's interest, it's profoundly in our own. But disputes among Republican lawmakers in Congress have delayed this funding. Well, the Senate's already approved this measure, but House Speaker Mike Johnson so far refused to put it to a vote. Amid threats to his job from the far right of his party, egged on by its leader and presidential candidate, Donald Trump. Victoria Spart sends 40 billion of our tax dollars to Ukraine. The specter of the former president's made US support for Ukraine a litmus test in Republican primaries, as congressional candidates compete to be seen as more aligned to Trump. Why does Victoria Sparks put Ukraine first? Chuck Goodrich will put America first. A Ukrainian-born congresswoman, the target of this attack ad from her Republican primary challenger. The emergence of U.S. aid to the war-torn country as an election issue reflects a broader shift in the Trump-led Republican Party towards an isolationist U.S. foreign policy, something which sparks increasing concern among the U.S.'s NATO allies. Well, I've been speaking to Latvia's Minister for Foreign Affairs, Christianis Karins. I asked him how important this NATO summit is to Ukraine's future. It's a difficult phase uh, that we're at right now that's uh, undisputable. Um, um, Russia is not winning the war, uh, but uh, they are simply uh, throwing massive resources into it, both in terms of human lives that are being uh, uh, wasted and lost, and also, of course, in terms of uh, sheer uh, volumes of artillery uh, and missiles and drones uh, aimed mostly at uh, Ukrainian uh, civil uh, infrastructure. Uh, so Ukraine can uh, fight back. They can also regain territory. They simply need the tools to do that. Right. And, and what are you saying to the sceptics like uh, your colleague in Hungary um, and the American right, uh, bluntly, who, who do not want to commit a huge amount more to this conflict? Well, I think that we saw there was a clear uh, two-party majority uh, in the Senate, uh, 70 uh, uh, votes in favour out of 100. It seems that uh, on a congressman-to-congressman a, a congressman basis, there's a similar bi a bipartisan support in the House of Representatives. Uh, if the Speaker will put this to a vote, uh, it seems that it should go through. And if we combine, then, uh, European support and U.S. support, uh, that combined uh, is the, the winning ticket uh, for Ukraine to, to have all of the tools that it needs at this point. I mean, is the truth that that American package is about future-proofing the conflict from a Trump presidency? 
Uh, no, I, I I don't see uh, any uh, need to, to to look at it uh, this way. Um, I think that any uh, uh, U.S. administration, any president, uh, would be quite interested in in maintaining uh, the U.S.'s uh, military superiority uh, around the world. And I I don't see any logic in the U.S. Uh, wanting to diminish uh, its own important uh, role in terms of also maintaining the order that that benefits uh, not only Europe but of course. The United States uh, equally, and if if uh, the meeting of today and yesterday is any indication, NATO is definitely pulling together, and that resolve is palpable in the room. I mean, except for Hungary. I mean, do you think the Hungarians are helping the Russians? Uh, no, and uh, no one is blocking any effort to move forward. So again. Uh, Everyone is trying to find uh, cracks in the system, but I, you know, just coming from the room, so to speak, uh, I can say that uh, NATO is uh, uh, very strong. Russia is all the time sowing doubts through disinformation, through false information, through outright, outright lies. Of course, the situation in Ukraine is very serious, but uh, the situation in NATO is not in that way serious. I just came out of the room and I felt strength and unity. I mean, all those governments in the room also need their domestic populations to support them and to believe that Ukraine is a crisis that needs more resources and more commitment. And I, I just wonder whether you think that the war in Gaza has changed the calculation at all for some NATO member states in terms of how their local populations feel uh, or what they're concentrating on right now. Um, instead of Ukraine? Uh, the war in Gaza, I think, is changing perceptions of, 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 of many things. Uh, but uh, certainly in, in this regard, uh, what we are uh, uh, also saying in all instances that we can is that what Russia is doing right now is trying to upend the rules-based international order, which has been in place since 1949. Uh, this is for all of our own uh, well-being. We need to support Ukraine because Ukraine is fighting for the very values that many of us take for granted. Mr. Karens, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.